All right, we are live for our second Thursday short. Is this the second one? This is the second one. I thought it was like the third or fourth. Uh, no, <laughs> it feels like the third or fourth because it's 10 o'clock here in Lisbon, Portugal, y'all. So, you know, let's just get right to it. Um, because what about a year ago? Well, not even a year ago, last year ago. though, um, you know, we came here for a scouting trip and for two years prior to that, we were watching videos. We were, we belonged to all of the Facebook expat groups yeah. and did all of this research and still we made mistakes. Yeah. You know, but you always make mistakes, but all the videos and all the Facebook groups and people we've talked to, they were all worth their weight in gold. Definitely, definitely. So we're going to we have compiled everything that we learned when we did our scouting trip, what we learned from other folks, and we put it into a handy dandy checklist, which is in the description below. But first, we should introduce ourselves. Handy dandy checklist. Hey, y'all. My name's Halisi. And I'm Rick. Welcome to our Black Utopia. On our channel, we talk about travel, money, and retiring abroad as we build generational wealth. So we help folks who are getting close to retirement age and forgot to plan, get their finances straight so that they can retire on time or maybe even early. We'll help to get you there. <laughs> so if you don't know, about six years ago, we had a wake up call. Our finances were crazy, but we got our stuff together. And within three years, we went from negative 22,000 to over 800,000 in net worth. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please hit the like, subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you you can know every time we drop a new video. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get down to the list. Number one. The first thing is write down what you'll be doing from day to day. That'll help to determine where you need to be. Yeah, because we did a video last week, right, talking about mm -hmm. Airbnbs in the city of Lisbon. But th the general thought process will help no matter where you're at. So when he says where you'll be, where you want to stay in the where city, et cetera, et cetera, will depend upon what you want your daily life to look like. Number two, learn some of the language, at least some key phrases before you go. Bom dia, botare. <laughs> Bonite. Eek. <laughs> Portuguese ain't easy, y'all. It is not it's easy. It's not easy. <laughs> well, reading it is a little easy if you know Spanish, but the pronunciation is a bear. At least learn key phrases. You know, thank you. You know, where's the restroom? Because they don't call them restrooms here. No. They call them something totally different. Water They're closet. usually water closets, but even when I ask, one time about a water closet. She looked at me like a cray cray. And I had to say, banho, bar banho. 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 And then she knew where I was talking about because I was- Even like, though it says WC for water closet. Yeah. I Who was, knows? I was dancing, folks. I was yeah. doing the dance. All right. So number three. Rent an apartment with a kitchen and try to live like the locals. You know, Go to the grocery stores and stuff. Meet people. Yes. You know, the grocers get to know you. Yeah. Live in a neighborhood. And then if you can, depending upon how long your scouting trip is, perhaps rent Airbnbs or wherever you want to rent through in different neighborhoods or different cities, depending upon what you're planning to do and what your scouting trip looks like. That's really important. And if we you got the little kiddos. You got to check out the schools, too. Yeah, Definitely that's farther that down on the list. So we didn't do that when we came and we thought we really wanted to live on the other side of the river. Yeah. But now that we're on the Lisbon side, I think we would rethink that. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> Number four. Visit the grocery stores, the shopping malls, the telecom stores uh, for pricing. I mean, see how, how much stuff costs. Yeah. Because you'd be surprised of the cost of a lot of things or the availability of a lot of things when you move abroad. Yeah. So look at what's available, but really make note of what's not available that you need for your daily life. And in America, probably in Canada, too, we're very spoiled. We have access to a lot of stuff, but it comes at a price. Right. Yeah, we are so spoiled. Yeah. We really I mean, are. I went to day before yesterday when I had to get my blood work done. Yeah. And, you know, America, you're used to, you know, 
call your doctor, make an appointment, go see your doctor. And usually uh, the uh, people that do the blood work is either in the same building, she gives you an order, you walk down there, hand it to the people, check yourself in, easy peasy. But when you don't know the language and they don't speak the language, oh, I mean. Your, your native tongue? I got serious attitude with the lady was sticking needles in my arm, taking blood, and she didn't get no blood the first time she stuck it. She stuck <laughs> me, but she didn't get no blood. The blood said, no, no, mm-mm, you didn't do it right. So she did it again, and she kept asking me these questions, and it's like, and I'm trying to explain to her, but we worked it. Yeah. We worked it out. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, <laughs> so make note of what's available and make note of what's not. Number five, Take public transportation and walk the neighborhoods to get a feel of the neighborhood, the vibe. Ask yourself, can I see myself living here? Right? Hmm. Yeah. Um, that's what we did. I mean, when we oh, were yeah. walking, we yeah. walked, you know, on that, on the Almada side, we walked on this side. And every other day we were asking ourselves, does this feel like home? Folks, we walked all over this place. <laughs> and we ain't even really scratched the surface yet. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So let's go over them again. Number one, write down what you'll be doing on a daily basis. So that, because that will dictate where you rent an apartment. Number two, learn some of the language, at least some key phrases. Number three, rent an apartment with a kitchen and try to live like a local. Number four, visit grocery stores, shopping malls, the telecom store, check out the prices, what's available, what's not. Number five, take public transportation, walk the neighborhoods. Number six, you were just talking about this. Check out the healthcare system again. Check out the healthcare system. If you are on medications, make sure or find out if they carry the medications that you are on in that country, not just the city, in the country. Most of the time they do. I know in Portugal, uh, so pretty far. much they carry everything that they carry in America. You know, I, I didn't get one of the prescriptions I wanted. I had to get an alternative, but check with your doctor to find out if you can take a generic instead of... Yeah, it wasn't an alternative. It was just it, a generic. It, it was a generic yeah. of what I usually took in the United States. And my doctor said, yeah, you've been fine with... Uh, you haven't had any issues or anything like that. So yeah, you can take the generic. It should be fine. But just make sure. Pricing, uh, you know, availability on the medicine and also the pricing. You know, the pricing isn't too crazy here. On some on some stuff stuff that I've had to have. So the, that's another thing: the insurance options. Um, make sure you understand how insurance works in America. Since Obama, you guys know that there is no uh, it's against the law to discriminate for pre existing. That is not the case around the world. They do discriminate here in Portugal. <laughs> so check that out. In Mexico, the insurance is, is even weirder. Um, however, like for here in Portugal, as long as you show that you have had consistent insurance, mm-hmm. they will a lot will cover the pre-existing um, conditions that you have, right? Mm-hmm. So, so there's that. All right, number seven. If relevant, visit schools and talk to parents with kids and also see about kitty activities. If you're going to bring your family with you, then you need to check out the schools. Go, you know, talk to someone who's got someone in school and see if you can sit in class just like you would do in America and check them out and um, make sure that the schools have what you need, that the pricing, especially if you're going to send your kid to an international school, that the pricing makes sense for you. Number eight, meet with some expats and ask them to bring along a local or a national that is that are here that you can get more information from. Expats don't have all the answers to everything. Yes. So sometimes when you bring in, we have a very good, uh, one of our followers, very good, uh, see, see, he's like a friend. Yeah, Rui. He's truly a friend, yeah. Rui. And he... He pops in every once in a while on on, uh, on our normal channel, and he gives great answers to a lot of things that we might not have ever thought of. Yep. But it's great to have that kind of support, you know, on your side. So definitely. Okay. So meet some expats. Bring uh, ask them to bring locals. Number nine, visit banks and talk to customer service about their policies and fees. 
A lot of American banks have gotten rid of their fees, especially if you have direct deposit, especially if you put a certain amount in the mm -hmm. bank and keep it there, never go under a certain balance. That is not necessarily the case everywhere in every country. Our bank was charging us fees. And then we learned that if we kept a certain balance, that they would not charge us the fees. But no one told us that in advance yeah. or I would have put more money in. Right. Yeah. Just find out. Make sure. I mean, it's your money. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And those fees can eat up your money. Oh, yeah. All right. Last but not least. Ten is to understand the local laws because they apply to any situation that you have because there's some driving laws. I know in Mexico, and I'm sure you, we've said it, if you ever watch Mr. Cortez Ross. Cortez. Cortez. He said it, and he's he said it again on uh, one of the other casts that he did. Mexican law ain't no joke. No, 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 no. So if they can't, if the insurance companies cannot figure out what's going on right there on the scene, and make everybody's, everybody's coming, going to jail. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. Going yes, to jail. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Till they work it out. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it, on Rashida's channel, they talked about that as well. This young lady named Danny got arrested, not because it was her fault, but because it was like seven o'clock in the evening on a Friday. Everybody was gone for the weekend. And so she had to be in jail for the whole weekend. You do not want to be in jail in Mexico. And they don't feed you. They don't feed you. They don't feed you. All right. So we have put the checklist in the description below, but we have a bonus. So if you stuck around to the end, we do have a bonus. So the bonus one is, of course, get medical travel insurance and don't overpack. That's not the bonus. The bonus is listen to the news and understand the political climate and the economic climate. You do not want to get out of the frying pan and into the fire right? Every country is not necessarily better than the United States. Um, and some countries are very new democracies and, and or they are electing idiots like number 45, whatever. And, you know, you just want to know what's going on before you commit to move there. So we were checking because they had an election right before we did the scouting trip here. Mm -hmm. And there was a very, 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 very conservative person who was on the ballot. And it's like, okay, if they get elected, that's going to change a lot of things. The last time they did that, they privatized the uh, mail, the mail system. system. And some of the locals said, and we ain't got a letter since. So um, the mail system here is very slow since they privatized it. So, you know, that that's a small thing. Um, they did elect good people this time, or at least not very, very conservative people as far as we are concerned this time. So, um, so we feel good about the political climate here in Portugal. And we did it in under 15. Let's go back over them one more time. Number one, write down what you will be doing daily. Number two, learn some of the language, at least key phrases. Number three, rent an apartment with a kitchen and try to live like a local. Number four, visit the grocery stores, the shopping malls, the telecom stores. Make note of the prices. You know, everything is not less expensive than America everywhere. Most things here are less expensive, though. Um, make note of what's not available. I need grits, y'all. If you're coming over here and you bring grits, I will buy you coffee. Um, number five, take won't be public French roast though. It won't be French roast. It won't be French roast. <laughs> number five, take public transportation and walk the neighborhoods. Even in America, you know, you don't get a sense of your neighborhood unless you walk it. You know, we go, we get in our car in the garage, we pull out, go to the grocery store, go right in, come back in, go into the garage and into our house. We, there's stuff going on in our in, in neighborhoods in the United States we probably don't even know. Number six, check out the healthcare system, the insurance, your prescriptions, all of that, and make sure what you need is available and that it is priced right. Yes. Number seven, if it's relevant, visit the schools and talk to parents. Number eight, meet with some expats and locals. Ask all of your questions. Make lists of them as you go about your business. Number nine, visit banks, talk to customer service, learn about their policies and fees. And number 10, understand the local laws as they apply to everyday life. And then our bonus, look at the political climate and the economic climate. The Yarbros did a, uh, a video. Did they? they? They were in Peru, wasn't it? Oh, that's right. And there was uh, kind of an uprising in Peru. I mean, thank goodness nothing happened to them. They 
you know, everything was safe. They weren't really in any danger, but, you know, and they watch what goes on and where, when they're going, but it just happened all of a sudden yep. and they were there. Yep. So they're, they were in Mexico last I checked, but just know what's going on. So we finished early. Um, we're going to ask one, we're answer one or two questions and then we're going to let y'all go. So Gladys asks, um, about how do you know where to stay, what neighborhood to live in if you don't know the areas. So if you're coming to Portugal, you guys know we worked with Rossini, who's been living here for quite a while and speaks Portuguese. His information is in the description below under all things Portugal. Um, we also did that Airbnb um, video mm -hmm. two weeks ago that you can check out and look at the thought process and, and the key things that we said about the difference between visiting and a scouting trip. Um, we show maps of Lisbon, if that's the area in Lisbon district, kind of, um, if that is what you're interested in. So yeah, um, I also, Hood Picker is also good for Portugal, but um, I also used to look at, not the Earth Awaits, but Lonely Planet, I think is the name of the website to, for when we were going to different places um, other than Portugal and Mexico. So that's also a way to do it. I saw our sign on here. Which one? I'll go down. Okay, first here's a question. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about not overpacking? <laughs> okay, y'all. <laughs> Don't do it. That's all I can say. Yes, yes. Um, definitely. Oh, hey, Jabari. Good to see you in the chat. Um, we love you. Um, so the first time we came to to um, to Europe, yeah, they have very narrow elevators. Um, <laughs> They're lifts. And, They're not elevators. They're and, lifts. Yes, in some in some of the very 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 old buildings, they are more like lifts than elevators. And think about what you will be doing on it on a daily basis. You know. If if you think you're going to be dressed up for something, is there a way that you can just have black slacks and one nice top or two nice tops that are flimsy that can roll up? Um, we took two large suitcases plus two carry ons. Right. When we were in um, when we came the first time and lugging all of that stuff around when especially in Venice, up the stairs, down the stairs and up the hills in Lisbon and down. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, look at what you're doing when, you, when you're when you coming over here. Are you planning on going out to restaurants, extravagant dressing, dressy stuff? You know, other than that, you don't need all that stuff. And not, you know, a and couple plus, of pair of jeans. Yeah, and everybody, that's, <laughs> it's not like the, the strangers in the restaurant know, oh, you wore that top yesterday. Yeah. Rent an apartment with a washer so you can wash your clothes. You know, that's something that we did when we came here last time. And they so, do have plenty of uh, laundromats around too. Laundromats as well. So when we came, when we did our scouting trip, we were gone for three months, May, June, and July. I lived out of a carry-on and a backpack. Y'all heard me, a carry-on and a backpack. And that's doing YouTube as well. So yeah, there is no reason to pack a bunch of stuff. Don't nobody care what you're wearing nope. except for you. Um, and I think we did it. Instant grits. Okay, this is so off topic. <laughs> this is so off topic. Uh, I have slow, slow cooked grits here with me now, but I will eat either. I am not picky. And he doesn't really know the difference. So he don't know the difference. So I won't grits. I want a bowl of grits. She won't give me a bowl of grits. She gives me a grit. You got to ration the grits. You got to ration right. them. That's not right. I need more than grit. <laughs> a grit. I need grits. Plural. All right. Well, we are going to let you go. We wanted to keep this short. The checklist is down below. When you do a scouting trip, make sure that you plan. Get the checklist. Add things to it that you think about or that makes sense for you. And we'll see you out there in those international streets. See ya. See ya. Oh, wait a minute. What? Before we go. Who? <laughs> if you have any more questions, you can book a call with us. That information is in the description below as well. Oh, yeah, that's important. Yeah. And don't forget to hit that like button. All right, y'all. See ya. See ya.